Hello, everybody. Oh, snap. I'm not sitting yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of this show. Called Wacky Talkies. Wacky Talkies. Yes. I always, I always mess that up. Like, I want to say do, wacky tackies. You should I'm not say, used to it. You should say wacky talkies, and I'll say wacky talkies, and you'll say wacky talkies. Duh. Okay. Duh. We need, like, a sound dun, effect dun. machine, right? It should be the old window sound. Like a soundboard? I yeah, like a soundboard. What would you say, Sonia? It should be the old window sound. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Right, so. We have Sonia Kilo here in yeah. the house. Hello. She is a local singer slash songwriter slash... A creative what creative director slash manager self manager <laughs> I know she does it all and she is awesome you can check her out on Spotify and where else it's on title Apple, Apple music, music on your mama's radio station on your grandma's <laughs> favorite radio station <laughs> yeah definitely check her they play on eighty nine point three a lot right yeah so on Fridays and Saturday on Kane's, Kane's block, block and on uh, heavy rotation with Q. Yeah, uh, and you so. have a show coming up actually. Oh too, yeah, right? on May eleventh with D, uh, with oh, <laughs> Cap G. <laughs> okay, Cap G. She's performing with Cap G on May eleventh. Where? At the Current Club in Deep Ellum. Deep. Ellum. But I don't know when this video is gonna come out. So, Patty I mean, Cake. No, this video. Oh, this one. Oh yeah. No, he he puts it out. Okay. Like on Friday or Saturday. Yeah. So maybe the okay. day before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All right. We gotta, we gotta do that. So, so yeah, tell us about yourself. Where you're from? What do you do? So I'm from Dallas, Texas, um, and I pretty much am a singer, songwriter, rapper, everything really. Um, some people know me by the name Sonia Kilo. Some people think my name is Megan Rain. Some people think my name is La Chismosa, uh, but it's just Sonia Kilo. But you can call me all of those things. And, and yeah, uh, Megan Ruby. Rain is actually one of the you know one of her very popular, hard hitting songs, and she has the video out on YouTube. Oh yeah, and, and Ruby I was did it. it. She was. Like, I'm not gonna like self plug myself in there. But she was in it. <laughs> I was in it. I feel like you and I on our, are on a date, and you're just kind of here. Mm. Oh, Nate is okay because he's always eating. Yeah. Like on every episode, almost. He's like, "Where's your Dr Pepper?" Oh. I didn't have time to get it. I'll get it so, later, though. Are you sure? So, Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, um, yeah, check that out on YouTube. Her next video is coming out pretty soon for Patty Cake. Yeah, and then I have an, actually another one that's going to be before that. But you guys just follow me on YouTube. We'll, we'll put it in the description below. We will. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do it. And Nate, uh, you know, um, you want to let them know what we're doing today? Yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, feel-good movies, film, films that make you feel not bad. So, Hence why I'm dressed like this. Oh, like, yeah, I would not know. As characters from the film, what are you dressed up as, Ruby? So I'm dressed up as 80s because, like, a lot of my feel good films, like, they're 80s from the 80s. So. <laughs> what about you, Sonia? What are okay, you so I have a lot of feel good. So I kind of just combined my look. My most favorite, favorite feel good movie is The Sandlot. Um, so I have my jersey on here. And then my one of my other ones is Dazed and Confused. So I have my. We can't see. But you know what? We should have done this. Come on. Look, I have bell bottoms on. We're gonna, we're gonna showcase. Can you showcase see it? Showcase on the video. But you can't see it. Look on the me. video. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna fall. I'm gonna don't go. fall. Please don't fall. We okay. Don't have okay. Okay. And this is my outfit. <laughs> Vogue. Yes. Yes, sister. <laughs> like he's like. Ruby, you're gonna make me roll my eyes out of my eye sockets. Oh man, don't do that. <laughs> and okay. I'm dressed, I'm dressed up as Steve Carell's character in Little Miss Sunshine. Woo! Yay! You gotta stand up and show. You should have uh, dressed up as a little girl though with her outfit. Why? Because that would have been better. That would have been wacky. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I I didn't button these. Uh, because I'm severely depressed, that's why I can't. Oh, what? Um, that's a bummer. I was like, well, this is about feel so good movies. Yeah, know. you just like this, totally killed the movie. Mm, but we do care. Thank you. <laughs> but we do care. Yeah. Low okay, key. so we're going to go through each of us. We're going to go and we're going to rotate. I'm going to be first, and then someone will be second, and then we'll be with her, and we're going to rotate until it's time to, to be done. Okay. So I'm going to start off, everyone. We're with switching oh, things up. That was sad. Oh, God. That's depressing. 
with me spitting. Uh, Your fork is dirty fork. now. Yeah, it's it's so dirty. So, <laughs> dirty. Um, my first film would be uh, we're gonna go take a trip back in time, back to the distant year of 2015. Damn, that was a long time ago. Distant. 2015 in 2015, San Francisco. Uh huh. Which one is it? In this Oscar-winning film for best animated film and best Oscar nominated for best original screenplay. Hold oh, wow. is that Avatar? It is not. It did not win best animated film. <laughs> okay, what is um, it? it is Keith Doctor's masterpiece, Inside Out. Oh yes, I love that one. You haven't seen. Is that, that the little emojis? No, that's no. emojis. emoji movie. This one is where the emotions are in her head, and she has like a fiery but, one. That's like, anger. Yeah, anger. So, but yeah. does she look like an emoji? Or she look like little people? No. They look like little people, the things that are the yeah, I've seen characters. That. Yeah, I've seen that. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, this, ca- this film is about uh, after young Riley, played by Caitlin Diaz, is uprooted from her Midwest life. She was moved to San Francisco where her emotions play uh, Joy, played by Amy Poehler, Fear, played by Bill Hader, Anger, played by Lucas Black, and Disgust, played by Mindy Killing, and Sadness, oh, played by Phyllis Smith, another office person. Mm-hmm. So, conf- and they conflict on how to best navigate a new city, house, and school. So I know the main theme of this film is I know it's a it's a feel good movie yes but one of the main themes of the film is that it is okay to be sad sometimes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's okay to be sad because in the film uh, it starts off with Joy trying to super empower herself mm-hmm. into it trying yeah. to force Riley to be Have happy these feelings, all yeah. the time. Don't eat my food. Eleven. This is why I'm always yelling at her. Look at I her. love you. She's Eleven. such an attention whore. Oh my god. I love you. I need to take a video of this right here because she does not do that with strangers, dude. Yeah, well, we know each other, right? Look at her. <laughs> okay, I had so. no idea Eleven was a girl this whole time. <laughs> okay. So, anyway. Um, yeah, so Joy tries to superimpose herself uh, all the time with Riley, but when Sadness tries to take over, um, Joy does not like that, not like that one bit. No. So much so that she makes sadness kind of Feel sit bad, out in the yeah. corner, which is kind of symbolizing of like I'm over of, you. Of like sa- being repressing your sadness, mm. repressing your sadness. And it is also <laughs> shown in um, the clothing that Riley was would wear. Like when she first arrived to San Francisco, she wore like this rainbow sweater, uh-huh. which is showing how she is in tune with all of her emotions. Uh-huh. But then, uh, when she decides to, you know, go out or leave for school or something, she puts on a yellow jacket, yeah, which symbolizes how she, her joy, is taking over the rest of her emotions, mm-hmm. and that's that's what that is. And where the catalyst of this uh, theme comes out is when uh, Bing Bong, the, the, imaginary. the imaginary friend, yeah. uh, gets really sad, and Joy tries to do it by being happy uh-huh. and and he doesn't fully feel better until sadness comes in and decides to you know help him out that mm-hmm. way and that's when joy also kind of like gets that idea of maybe sadness isn't so isn't bad. bad maybe yeah. we need to be sad she doesn't fully understand this until she sees one of the core memories or one of the memories uh of joy but preceding that it was sadness yeah knowing that it's you need to be sad in order to be happy. Be happy. So what do you guys think on, on that? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was definitely feel good because it does go through all of those emotions. And then I really, really, really love that at the end, they made, um, they showed like every other thing and the inside of their head, like they showed cat, a cat and the inside of their head was filled with, with cats, but they were all just doing like random mm-hmm. things because that's I what cats watch it. <laughs> Okay. So that part was really funny, but overall, it was a really good story. Okay, Robin, you have to go now because you're making me very dirty. Yes. <laughs> look at her. Look at his thoughts. Yeah. Well, I feel like I need to watch the movie now. Yeah. But I also, I also movie. base like my feel good movies off of like you know how you can like put something on at night to just make you feel better, even if you fall asleep. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, one? yeah, yeah. That yeah. one is one of those for you? Yes. So, so do you guys think it's okay to be sad sometimes? Yeah. Heck yeah. Yes? Why is that? Because I think just like you said. Why don't I just you, be happy all the time? That's oh, But that's then you won't know that you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think anybody that's like happy all the time is on medication. Mm. <laughs> and it's not like horrible to be happy all the time, but it's not real because just like life, you know, makes you go through like different days. Like there's different days of the week. There's different emotions. Like you're not supposed yeah, to oh, be. I go through like, I don't know how many emotions a day just yeah. as Joe. Like mm. it's super Like emotional. I'm never like really sad, like extremely sad for, for there's probably been a good time. I, I get say. really extremely sad, but it doesn't last long. Thank you. Yeah. Me. And I know there's people that are like that. And I, I know that there's going to be a time that I'm probably like that. And I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with it. Like literally the weight of the world is always on my shoulders mm. all the time. So, uh, <laughs> like a Ruby, you have children, right? Yes. Do you want to do. teach your children, especially at this age, that should you just be happy or be more in tune with other emotions other than happiness? I think regardless, you're going to go through that. If regardless. you're, yeah, if you, you're you living in the world that we're in today, you're going to school and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you interact and you go through all of those emotions. You kind of just find them out on your own. And we as parents try to walk you through that, mm -hmm. you know, and make sure that you know you're going to be okay regardless. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is sad you wouldn't say hey stop being sad no. you shouldn't be sad you, no. <laughs> i don't think we would do definitely it. don't go bah. Bah. okay so i mean but there's also but this is the other thing sometimes kids are sad because they think that whatever they're sad about is really that bad so you do have to teach them yeah that it's not yeah that bad. i mean don't t you can't tell your kids like what you're talking about right now is not important and just this, this, and this because I said so. You mm -hmm. gotta like sit there and ask them, you know, why do you feel this way? Why do you think you feel this way? Was it this that made mm -hmm. you feel, you know, it's just like mental health is really important. Like it should be important in everyone's household. So, how do you think we should get, oh my God. <laughs> how should we get emotional maturity? How do we be emotionally healthy? I feel so bad for you. <laughs> um, how do you get emotional? Well, I think one of the ways that you get you get emotional maturity, right, is what you said, right? Mm -hmm. Emotional. The one of the ways to get emotional maturity is to actually identify why you feel the way that you feel. Mm -hmm. So in some generations and in some cultures, it was a big deal that you did not express your emotions. You didn't mm -hmm. talk about them, especially in men for mm -hmm. some cultures. Mm -hmm. So they never oh, knew how to do it. that. almost. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not trying to be like racist <laughs> or prejudiced, but no. white people get to talk about this shit all the time. <laughs> really? <laughs> do you have white people friends? Just yes! Up and and lay yeah. hours at night saying here's my yes <laughs> okay <laughs> no okay anyways so um so i feel like that i feel like in those times and sometimes even now um you are not allowed to express like your emotions so i feel like once you build that relationship with somebody or you're told at a certain point in your life that this is how you're supposed to function as a human being is when things start to come like okay click 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 this is how i deal with it mm -hmm. you're supposed you're just supposed to talk about your emotions mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. all right so that was include uh, inside out and so what is your first pick yours oh my okay so i'm not gonna be as in debt as no me. you don't have i to feel be. like don't even i feel like feel he's about pressure. to overshadow me i feel like you're ariana and I'm like the person that's trying to become. Up. No, dude, don't worry about it. He's a, cin he's a cinephile. He's a cinephile. Well, you don't want to be a cinephile. I, I, yeah, I studied film. You can be Ariana though. I'll be Ariana. Okay, and so I feel like uh, my first pick is is actually going to be um, Dazed and Confused. So Dazed and Confused, I got to watch probably when I was in the fifth or fourth grade. Had no idea what the hell the movie was about <laughs> at that young of age. I was just like these. I was like, this is how these guys look like they're having this is fun. how high school is gonna be. So I was really excited because that was how high school is gonna be, and I thought that when it was time for me to become a freshman, mm -hmm. I was gonna get like hazed, you know, fried like bacon, you little oh piggies, my fried. God. Have you seen Days and Confused? 
I am not. Okay, so Days and Confused was based on the it's 70s. It's a stoner movie. You wouldn't know. In know. Austin, Texas, Matthew McConaughey is in it. Yes. Ben Affleck is in it. Yes. Uh, Dave Chappelle, isn't it? No. Days and Confused? He ain't in the one. Oh, wait, no, he's in the other one. Which one is he That's in? That's another on? stoner movie. Yeah, it is. Is that Days of Confusion? Is it the saying? Chappelle show? No, oh. the one that Dave Chappelle was on. The Chappelle show? No. <laughs> the Link later also made uh, okay. Days of Confused, which is great. So, um, Jason London, I think, is a pretty big... Mm, you probably wouldn't know him unless you saw his face. Half baked. Uh, Mila Jovovich is in it. Do you guys know who Mila Jovovich is? I do know who that is. In the yeah. '90s, like Mila Jovovich, the and Nina even now, yeah, like she was a really big deal. Fucking, uh, what do you call that zombie apocalypse movie? You mean Underworld? No, Resident no, Evil. Resident Evil. Yeah. Oh. And then Parker Posey. She was actually one of the mean girls. So it basically shows you the dynamics of high school. Mm -hmm. In the high school, you have your jocks, you have your nerds, you have your senior. Oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, like, I remember. Yeah, it shows your senior it girls. like, And so they're going to become seniors because they're getting out for the summer. So they're going to haze the coming in freshmen. Mm -hmm. And so Parker Posey was one of those girls that was going to become a senior. She was a bitch. Mm. She was like a bitch. Okay. And basically, they all were going to meet up for this party, and I think what ended up happening was they were dropping off a, what is it called? A keg at the house that they were going to- A keg, what is it called? I was like, they were dropping off the keg at the house mm -hmm. that they were going to have the party at, and the dad, because the parents are going out of town, and the dad yeah. was like, what's going on? He was like, oh no, they have the wrong house. And then basically, he was like, no, nah, we're going to stay home. So they had to find out another, place to have this party they had all the cake they had all the stuff um matthew mcconaughey's like most famous line in that movie is all right all right all right mm -hmm. oh yeah that's what everybody loves him for because like, he's all right, he, all right. yeah because he's older like he he just likes to hang around he's one of those guys that has actually already graduated from high school yeah like he just still hangs he's around, around there. because he says he gets older but the ladies stay the same <laughs> you guys think that's weird though? yes yeah like, what if, so they like, definitely like we're okay with showing that. Mm. <laughs> and then the other reason why I liked that movie was because I actually am a big fan of like good classic rock. I love what Boston. What year was it? Do you know? No, I think it was like 60. Let's see. The movie? Yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure it was not released in the 1960s. No, we're saying like the time that it was based in. Oh. No, no, the, the movie, when did it come out? Oh, 93. 93, okay. Yeah. Um,. But yeah, so I just really liked obviously the fashion. I love the dynamics of every group. I liked how at the end they did come together and end up having a huge party at at like a big open field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, nobody had cell phones then. Yeah, you got to just enjoy. You had to hear like about the, the party vibe. through people, like yeah. it was just crazy. That's crazy. Is that the yeah. Old days? yeah. You remember those days? Yeah. I remember those days. Mm -hmm. But I think, but the reason why I think it's a feel good movie for me is just because um, I think like no matter what I'm doing in my life, like even when it comes to like songwriting or like being like creative and like my own element, is I always think about the things that made me happy like when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So like high school was a, a re really cool thing with me because I grew up with the same group of friends my whole life, mm -hmm. and I feel like that movie kind of represents that. I was not mean. If anybody's watching this and you're going to say I'm mean, I need you to say it to my face because I don't remember being mean. <laughs> that was mean. That was mean. But yeah, that's my feel good movie. I just really like it. All right. Cool. Ruby, your turn. So, like I said, a lot of my feel good movies are... 80s, you know. Was it um, made in the 1980s or were they based in the They 90s? were made in the, in the 1980s and some of them were based in the 1980s. I just right. love the 80s. <laughs> like, for real. It was an okay time. What? It was an okay time. It's kind of weird. For yeah. them, it was an okay time. Weird time. I loved it. Shoulder I loved the music. Pads. The fashion <laughs> was questionable, but... I love the music. I love everything about, like, the whole... How do you say the nostalgia? Nostalgia. The, well, the aesthetic, too. Oh. Like, it's just, just, I don't know. Okay, I love the 80s. Right, no. but, and all of these movies, they have, like, such a good, relatable story, you know, mm -hmm. in the 80s. And I feel like they have a really good, relatable story that goes, you know, from the beginning to end. It's really simple. Um, it's not something, you know, that nobody can watch. Anybody can watch it and understand what's happening. And you feel the emotion through all of these, you know, it's because it's super relatable. So my first one that I'm going to mention is a John Hughes film, <gasps> of course, Rip. 
And um, this one is starring Matthew Broderick. <gasps> I know. Alan right. Ruck. <gasps> and Mia Sara. It was in the 1986 that it came out. And it's called... Ferris Bueller's Day Out. Yes. Yes! It's Ferris Bueller's Day Out. Ah! He did his performance. Yes, I love that scene where he gets on the fucking float. Who doesn't want to ever do that? But did you have you ever seen Ferris Bueller's Day Out? I have not. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, you know, you know, Matthew McConaughey is married to Sarah Jessica Parker, so I feel like because Sarah Jessica Parker was also in a lot of eighties movies. Yes. I feel like Matthew McConaughey was like her dream guy, and she got to like marry him. Yeah, but she also got to marry Matthew Broderick, right? So I mean, not McConaughey. Sorry, Matthew Broderick. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that was like her. Like she saw him in that movie and was like. He's hot. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. I like that he's in high school. Yeah. Because she was in high school too. Oh. Yeah, they were both nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a good movie because um, from the beginning, like, it's so rebellious. So, you know, it, it taps into that rebellious side that everybody has when they're in high school. And this guy's actually, like, having, like, deep conversations about life, you know, and, like, I just want to get take this fucking day off, you know. And he takes the day off and he fucking skips school and he goes off fucking out, bro. Like he does yeah, the most does. craziest shit that day. He fucking sings and does that whole scene on the but, parade. What is it? What is the song? Dude, it's not do it's not do you no. no. What was it? But whose car did he steal? Did he steal the car? Or was it his friend's? It was his friend's dad's. Yes, it was an expensive nice car. car. They like it was like a Ferrari, wasn't it? And they were trying to reverse the mileage on it, right? Were they trying yes. to reverse the mileage? And it ended up like it crashing. Like they made disaster. it all the way back home. Yeah. They, were, they were trying. They made it, so they took it out, and then they tried to bring it back and put it back, like like it was in mint condition, like it was never touched. And they were trying to reverse the mileage on it, and. I guess they had some idea to do it in reverse, right? I yeah. don't think that's how it works. Well, apparently, no. they didn't have Google this back then. Twist and shout, twist and shout. Come on, come on, come on, baby, now. Won't you work it on out? Okay, so, isn't that awesome? That's fucking awesome, bro. So yeah, well, basically, yeah, it. like that movie is pretty cool. And wasn't his sister like trying to catch him the whole time that he wasn't in school? Yeah, so he has his sister that's really, like she's a hater basically. She's salty. She's a little sister? Mm, older I sister? think she's older. Oh. She's older. And he always, but like just for like one year. And um, he's always skipping a ditching class and he's like living his best life, you know, he don't give a fuck. And she like gets so mad that he can do that and get away with it because no one ever catches him. So her whole thing is, I'm gonna catch him this day, you know. But then he ends, she ends up helping him out mm. at the end. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like a it's a feel good brother sister, feel good brother sister moment. Yeah, I like how they become partners in crime. Yeah. Let's break rules. Finger together. guns, break rules. <laughs> Don't break rules, kids. Go to school. Education is important. Education is important. I'm not gonna say no to that. Right. Definitely educate yourself. Okay, so my next film, we're gonna take you. We're gonna go into our time machines and we're gonna go all the way back. We're in the time machine again. Yes, to okay. medieval England. Can we go back to a different time? No, we're going to medieval England. Does okay. Have Martin Lawrence in it. Uh, no. <laughs> I hate medieval England. Wait, okay, what yeah. year? Like, what? Oh my god, I hate medieval England. I don't know. I didn't specify. I can so brutal. Out. But this film was nominated for an Oscar for Best Original Song. And it was made by Rob Reiner's masterpiece, Princess Bride. Oh, mm, mm, um. You don't like the Princess Bride? Uh -uh. It's okay. Oh, it's like a little bit you. funny. Like it's supposed to be like comedic, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I, never seen I don't it. know. The comedic oh. to me it wasn't so appealing. Dare. You never Maybe seen I have to rewatch it. I have to rewatch it. I do like that the guy that's from that movie, the main, the lead, what's his name? Uh, Carrie Elwes. Yes. So he's on the third season of Stranger Things. He's coming out and he's going to be the mayor. Okay. <laughs> well, um, and this film is based on the novel by William Goldman. And it is about, uh, while sick in bed, a young boy, who was, I believe was played by Fred Savage, mm -hmm. um, his grandfather reads to him a story of a farm boy turned pirate played by Carrie Ellis, and who's, who encounters numerous obstacles, enemies, allies, and his quest to be reunited with his true love, Buttercup. 
played by one talented Robin Wright. Buttercup. That's his, that's her name. <laughs> that's her name. That's her name. Buttercup. <laughs> then there was the, the the main antagonist whose name was Humperdinck, which is I've never weird. seen. Yeah, so movie. it's supposed to be one of those dumb kind of like stu- stupid comedies, but right? Do you yeah. feel like it was like but like it, space balls? Well, Not like, so much. Did it, it come out in two thousand? It came out in nineteen eighty seven. Yeah. Yep, that was the year that I was born. I've never mm-hmm. seen that. Oh, it's I a great film. You can watch it right now on Cinemax if you have it. Cinemax. Cinemax. Then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't have Cinemax. Okay. So um, this film basically it's it's based, uh, pretty much it's the whole idea of true love. Um, and this character, Wesley, who is Carrie Elvis's character, he basically goes through thick and thin trying to save this girl um, who he hasn't seen in, I don't know how long, maybe 10, 15 years. Um, and then when they get reunited, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm in love with you all over again. You're my true love. <laughs> so uh, It's a cheesy movie. Yeah, well, what do you guys think about that whole idea of, of true love? Can you still love a person that you liked? Maybe, like, that you liked for a bit? And I then think you, I can't, separated? we can't really answer that in nowadays. And I mean, that was medieval there, England. I could see that happening in medieval England. But you know what? Sometimes I think about, like, when I watch, like, those movies that are like that. Like, what would be their modern day, um... What's that thing? What's that dating app? Tinder. <laughs> Tinder. What would be their modern day <laughs> Tinder? Do they get to like go to the party and be like, next, <laughs> next, next. Oh, you're that, good. That is actually kind go. of how it was go. like. See, so I feel like, so I feel like your true love, and then also at the same time too, they had a lot of things, they had a lot of pressure on if you guys were from the same class of like. That is also true. Because this yeah. person was, this lady was, I believe, uh, a daughter of the landlord, which mm-hmm. was a huge deal back then. She yeah. Was, and Wesley was just a farmhand. Peasant. Was just a yeah. farm boy. <laughs> Peasant. And so every time she would talk to her, talk to him, she would only call him farm boy. She would Ooh. be like, farm boy, do this. See, and, and he fell in love with her. Yeah, but then because you, because he, all he would ever say to her was, "As you wish." That's yeah. all he would ever say to her. And then. Uh, well, I guess no woman could say no to that. And then all, all of a sudden, and then one day she realized, oh, this guy looks kind of funky. <laughs> you mean she was doing it? She was getting, getting saucy? Get kind of hunky. <laughs> so she, she was like, farm boy, get me this pail of water. And then she was like, please. <laughs> oh my God. And then she was like, as you wish. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and then they vigorously made out. Vigorously, yeah, that's what happened. But then uh, she he had to go to sail or something, and then then he got kidnapped by pirates, and then they were separated for ten that's years. Some, ain't that some shit? Wow. And you then, finally get you finally get the love of your life, and then you get kidnapped by bitch pirates. Ass pirates coming here. <laughs> pirates. So do you these think, gang gang pirates? <laughs> so do you think in your opinion of the whole true love idea that this film is portraying has changed now that you know the context behind the romance? I mean, she said, hmm. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Can repeat you repeat the question? <laughs> like, do you think, does, does your opinion of the whole true love thing change after knowing, knowing that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. changes? Not mine. I, I think, don't think that was true love. You don't think it was true love? I think for him it was, but not for her. I, th- I think that could only really happen back then, dude. Like, really? I don't ever see that happening now. Okay, so like... Uh, imagine that you uh, you like this one person in high school, but then you graduate, and then you never see him again in ten years, and then they come back. I don't think that's true. Love. You wouldn't. I wouldn't like, consider be that true, true love after, after all those love years. <laughs> after all those years, it definitely wouldn't be so immensely like right. that. Yeah. It'd be like, hey, <laughs> like yeah. what you been up to? I think my my vision of like what true love is is like someone that either like even if you're just friends, like if somebody like let's say. You were you were friends with this guy your whole life, and you were in each other's life constantly, 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 and then you realized you're the one I'm supposed to be with. That's true love. Yeah. Not this like, no, nah, you're not up to my standards. I'm gonna keep looking, and then all of a sudden they pop up one day, and they're like, oh, what yeah, are you? exactly. You're looking a little hunky, like she did, and that's not okay. Okay, <laughs> that's not, not okay. 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 Yeah, and then um, uh, what else? 
so you were saying that you, it was mostly the love was mostly on Wesley's side. What yeah. did you explain on that? Why is it only only on Wesley's she side? She just said. I just said it. Yeah, but how do you think it's only on Wesley's side? She because, just said. Well, it, it was probably because he was also like farm boy, uh-huh. and so he probably loved her from the t- moment that he saw her, and he was doing all of these things for her. Yeah, yeah I don't think that's like a good basis of a relationship. He had to wait his turn, like Wesley. I wish I was there for Wesley. It would have been like, first of all, Wesley. You can do better. She's she's <laughs> whack. Go to sleep. Okay. Uh, but as he was uh, getting kidnapped by pirates, apparently gang, he, gang. <laughs> he rose through the ranks and he basically became the captain. And then he uh, and then like he came back as a pirate captain. Yeah, he's a pirate captain. So he was in a gang. Yeah, kind of. <gasps> That's a little dangerous. You go, Wesley. Yeah, so but I still would have been like, what, you're a pirate now? Like, bro. Yeah, but not only the pirate, any pirate, but he was posing as the pirate that supposedly killed him. So. Plot twist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he was posing as the pirate that supposedly killed him, which was the dread pirate Roberts. Okay. So, um, when he found out that Buttercup was kidnapped by three different, like, mercenaries who was trying to start a war between a rival kingdom... Well, one played by Sean Wallace, and the other one played by Andre the Giant. I thought he was going to say Andre 3000. <laughs> uh, before his time. You know, I actually love Andre the Giant, and I was so sad when he passed away. You uh, know Andre the Giant is? I think a wrestler. So. He was like a massive wrestler. Yeah. Massive. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I remember they, uh, I think uh, the person who wrote the screenplay, or, oh, it was Goldman, the guy who wrote the novel. He wanted Andre the Giant to play him in the first bit. Oh. But... Uh, then they were like, but the producers was like, ah, he's a bit too popular bit, and expensive. Oh. Why don't you get this new up and coming oh. guy, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh. Oh. And then the Terminator came. Get in the came chopper. Out. And then Terminator came out. Get in the out. chopper. And then, then it was too expensive. Yeah, now he was too expensive. It was like, oh, I guess we'll do Andre the big guy. Andre the big guy. Andre the big guy. Yeah, so we'll do that. But yeah, so when uh, those three, and it was another guy who was a Spanish guy. I don't remember his name. But he was uh, like a Spanish uh, sword fighter. Okay. Mm-hmm. Conquistador? No, he's not a conquistador. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to say after Spanish. <laughs> so, She's been waiting yeah, her whole so life to kidnapped. use that word. <laughs> so they were kidnapped, but then uh, uh, Dread Pirate Roberts, which is really Wesley, okay. came by and basically... Uh, fought the Spanish guy, defeated him, then fought against Andre the Giant, defeated him, okay, and then just... went over to uh, w- uh, uh, Sean Wallace's character, mm-hmm. and he ended up poisoning him. What? <laughs> I don't know. This movie is a little too much going on. So why did they, they name it Princess Bride? They should have named it something else, like. I... Yeah, does Pirates that of the title Caribbean even before go the with Pirates it? of the Caribbean? Yeah. Does that even go with the, the title? Movie? Go like, with that well, movie? what happened was was that he he was like, we're gonna do a game of wits. So, so he po- he poisoned uh, one of the cups, and whoever drinks from the right cup, uh, like wins. Russian roulette, kind basically. Of, yeah, but it, it, oh, it, Riverdale stole that. Then, they do that during that fucking gargan. Uh, uh, what do you call? Don't that? tell me. Okay, but Griffins it, and Gargoyles sh- game. But then if they then we realized that he actually poisoned both cups and he had an immunity to the poison. Ha ha! <laughs> so, yeah, that's what that was. That's a so, weird ass. This amazing. is a feel good movie? It is really a feel good movie. Yeah, it was, how it was, does it feel good, bro? It was very quirky the way they did it. Oh, because it's comedic. Like, all uh, of this stuff is happening, but they're like. But it's not like Game of Thrones, like. <laughs> no. Yeah, it was very no, quirky. Not and no, it's not, silly. I don't think it's, it's not dark. Like that. No, it's not. Okay. Um. Uh, so yeah, so this guy he basically did all this to save this girl that he hasn't seen in ten years. Mm-hmm. That's that girl. Yeah. So for what do you, real. you guys don't you didn't you guys don't think that was justified? No, no. I like Shrek's story. For though. him, it may be justified for him, but who knows what some girl's doing? She probably was out all hours of the night in every <laughs> pub, whatever they called it. <laughs> Actually, basically, what happened was after she uh, sure. Wesley yeah. left and she found out that the Dread Pilot Roberts killed him. She went into a deep depression and never did anything after that. Aww. And then she was uh, basically uh, founded by the king who was named Humperdinck, who wanted her to be his bride. Uh, oh, um, that's why, the princess bride. Yeah, and then she was like, the only time I get joy is riding around in the woods. And while she was riding around the woods, that's where she got kidnapped. But that's what she did. She got kidnapped? Mm-hmm. 
When? When she was riding out in the woods. Oh, the king Thinking kidnapped her. Wesley. No, the, the three mercenary guys did. Oh, okay. And that's I didn't when, see the movie. And that's when Wesley came in and defeated them all. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, but then... Uh, and then they end up together? You no. Know, uh, <laughs> the king <laughs> wanted to kill uh, Wesley because he was like, you're moving up on my girl guy. <laughs> so... She was like, don't hurt him, I'll stay with you. And then he was like, okay, fine. We're, we'll send him back to his ship. And then he turns to his guy, we're not going to do that. What we're actually going to do is we're going to torture him forever. And then he was like, okay, we're going to torture him forever. The king? He gets tortured forever? By the king, yeah. Wesley gets tortured forever? Mm -hmm. And then he gets tortured for it. This is a good movie. Okay, I next. Just, yeah, we're going we're to the next one. That. Okay, so <laughs> Princess Bride, what do you guys think? That was not a good We already told you movie. what we did. You can yeah. watch it. It's really yeah. fun. It's really fun. If I watch this. He gets this... tortured at the end. Yeah. No, he doesn't. He gets saved. Oh. He gets saved by Andre the Giant and the Spanish guy. Okay. <laughs> you left that part out. <laughs> yes, he did. Okay, um, no, that's it. Okay, good, good. Okay, good. Okay. Your turn, so okay, yeah. so my second movie. We're, are we are we gonna have time for number three? Because I gotta decide which one I'm gonna do. Um, yeah, we have yeah, we have twenty two. Yeah, okay. well, twenty three minutes on my end. Okay, so my second feel good movie is actually called Empire Records. Have you ever seen it? No. Oh yeah. Empire Records is a movie. You know, I'm really starting to question your like ability to watch good movies. Okay. <laughs> so Empire. Yeah, Records, he doesn't even watch Game of Thrones. I don't either. Oh my god. Da, da, da. The okay. So what about Empire Records? Okay, so Empire Records was also made in the nineties, was also based in the nineties. I'm gonna get the exact time that it was made. Year it was made. Um but it has a lot of people in it. It has um Liv Tyler, which mm -hmm. is Steven Tyler's daughter. daughter. You know, mm -hmm. Errol Smith. Uh -huh. I know what the word Okay. Is. Well I don't know, you listen to nothing but Biggie and Tupac. Come over here and we're gonna fight. Okay, he <laughs> said so we're gonna fight. Okay, so it has Liv Tyler. It also has Ethan Embry, which I love Ethan Embry. If you guys ever need a face, Ethan Embry was also the guy that was in um, I Can Hardly Wait. Remember? The main guy. Yeah, what's That's his name? Ethan, Ethan Embry. Wait, let me see. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then Renee Zellweger, which, so around this time, Liv Tyler and Renee Zellweger, they were probably like in their early 20s. So they were young. Yeah, so it came out in 1995. So it was a, it's my feel-good movie because another it's based around a record store. And these kids like are also all different types, just like these movies. So they're all different types. So Liv Tyler is the girl that is so smart, is able to do everything. She goes, she's trying to go to college and like be like this perfect person because she thinks she has to be perfect. Renee Zellweger is kind of known as the floozy. The slut. Yeah, but I don't like to use that word. So the, the floozy. And um, Liv Tyler and Renee Zellweger are like best friends. And then Ethan Embry is actually a little like spastic. Like he's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain him, but he's one of my favorite characters in it. And then Robin Tooney was, um, I think, a is big... Is she the one that's on the craft? So she, yeah, so yeah. she's also in the craft. So I think in this movie, she plays an important role as her character because she's a little bit darker. She deals with depression. She, she deals, cuts off she her cut, hair. She cuts herself, she cuts her so she's a cutter. And you're talking about me. This is not a feel good Hold movie. on, have I even got to the, I'll let you get to the end. I'm just letting you know the characters. Yeah. Okay. It's a bad so that was, tell me about this cheery, good, fun movie. Okay. It deals keeps, with self-harm. And then um, the other, uh, I forgot what his name is. What's his name? What's his name? What's the other guy's name? The main guy. What's his name? Hold on. Sad depressment. Lucas. <laughs> Lucas. Basically, at the beginning of the movie, Lucas is given the responsibility to turn in the you know end of day money into the bank, mm -hmm. and he decides to go to Atlantic. Atlantic, Atlantic City. Yeah. Atlantic oh City. yeah. Okay. And because he thinks that his boss is gonna sell the record store. Okay. So he thinks that. He needs to help him. He's going to go try to double this money. Well, he loses it all. So he comes back. And when he comes back, to everybody's like, what's going on? What's wrong with you? So they're all finding out when they're clocking in that he took Joe's money. That's the manager's name. And Joe's that's like money. the whole basis of like the story. Like they all start like rumoring, rumoring things, you know, about the store closing and stuff mm -hmm. like yeah. that. So basically when they find that out, Joe's like, because Lucas is actually like one of those kids, I think, that came out of the foster system. I don't think he has a family. So Joe was like his family. So Joe is like pissed off, and he basically tells him, this is what this place is going to become. It's going to be called 
It's going to become, oh, what is it called? Some record store, basically. Okay. Like a chain record store. Okay. When they're like a mom and pop record store. Uh-huh. And so, um, anyways, they're like, oh, man. So he's like, now you guys are going to have to start wearing uniforms and you guys are going to have to start doing this. And they're like, no, like this. And they like all bell out and like do all the shit. Anyways, Rex Manning, it's Rex Manning Day. He's basically like an 80s pop heartthrob. Yeah. And they're like, it's Rex Manning Day. <laughs> And Liv Tyler loves him, and she thinks that she's gonna lose her virginity to him. To him. Okay. To him. She's like, she's like, I love you, Rex. Sounds and like another person I know. Who? Me? Not you. But oh. it was with Liv Tyler. It's not with uh, some guys. Another pop. Not pop. Another teen Who? star. Who? Just think hard. Me? Not you. We're all like, like me. Oh, it's like me. <laughs> Only person I want to get on is my husband. I know. <laughs> Who is it? Is Serenity. Serenity. Yes. Oh, Serenity. I'm she's a not thinking like that. She's thinking more. She thinks she's gonna find true love with Finn Wolfhard. That's an issue. But you think she's gonna be like as you wish, and then disappear ten years, and then come back and be a pirate captain? And no, he's not. From he's definitely not. Because we're in nowadays. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay so else, basically, though. um. Then, so basically Rex Manny comes and they find out that he's just a douche but Liv doesn't find out that he's a douche her name's Corey by the way her name's Corey and there's somebody that actually loves Corey um shit I forgot his name yeah but he's she always realize yeah no, she doesn't she doesn't realize. The oh AJ end. AJ loves Corey love love loves Corey and who he, is he played wants to by tell, Johnny Whitworth he wants to tell her that he loves her but she's like so obsessed with Rex Manning day so, anyways, she decides that she wants to serve him his lunch, Rex Manny, and basically he pretty much says, and like, basically hop flaunt. on. Yeah. Flaunt and she doesn't itself. think in her mind that that's how her first time is going to be, so she was, like, totally disgusted. She puts all her stuff back on, and she runs out, and AJ catches her, and AJ is like, hey, I love you. And she's like, not right now, AJ, not right now. And then he's all pissed off. Everybody's all pissed off. But at the end, they all come together to save the record store. They put on this amazing... They oh. put on this amazing concert. Like concert, yeah. How it's like the they? end of the... They're you know, teenagers. Oh, they're like, they're like t- probably early, like 20, 21. And they're working at a record store or whatever. Okay. And um, yeah, basically they put on this amazing concert and they save the Do record they store. Do they play the, uh, the instruments themselves? I Renee forgot. Zellweger sings this amazing song. Yeah, she sings. That's right. Yeah, she sings this song. Because she says that that's what she wants to do. Like, They end up like all saying what their greatest fears are at the end of the well before the end of the movie they say what all their greatest fears are because homegirl the one that cuts herself they made her like a mock funeral because they were like if you want to kill yourself like this is what it's going to be like it's very like they all up. came together and saved each other it's yeah very messed up. at the end no it's a mock funeral it's for everybody to be like we gotta tell you how much we would miss oh, you oh i thought it was gonna be like Oh, you want to kill yourself? This is how it's like. You want it to be like this? No. And, so- <laughs> and then and then slaps across the room. Hey. <laughs> so at the funeral, they all talk about like the greatest fear. And, <laughs> so- and so, yep, that's my feel good movie. Yeah, speaking of Renee Zellweger, I mean, I have one film of, of hers that Texas I don't think Chainsaw we're gonna- Massacre? No, it's Bridget Jones' <laughs> Diary. What? Bridget Jones' oh, yeah. Diary. Yeah. yeah, which she was British. Actually, you haven't watched all of those. Okay. Uh, where she was British. Yeah, so... Uh, You're done with yours? Movie, your turn. Okay. My turn. Guess what? It's another 80s movie. Boo. Boo yourself. This one is a 1985 John Hughes film. Okay. Yeah, I love John Hughes. <laughs> and this one is starring Emilio Estevez, Judd Nelson... Molly Ringwald, which actually, like, her career was, like, dead until she hopped on Riverdale. So now she's on Riverdale and she's That's Archie's so mom. Up. And Molly, if you're watching this, don't let her talk down on you like that. <laughs> you are I'm Molly down on her. Molly Ringwald. Okay. She forgot who she was and then she remembered. Okay. Hold on, I'm trying to think what movie this is. Amelia this Hold on, is... Don't tell me... Okay. It's not Pretty in Pink. It's no. not 16, 16 Candles. It's not 16. Is. No, it's not. It no, it's not. Amelia Estevez was not in 16 Candles. Yeah, it exactly. must be. If you're going to come, come correct, okay? You know what it is. He knows what it is. What is it? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up! I still have... Can I phone a friend? Um, Ruby. 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 Yeah, Ruby. Ruby. You're going to phone me with a friend. <laughs> Hold on. Emilio Estevez. I feel like I've... Emilio Estevez, Judd Nelson. What's a Judd Nelson? And Molly Ringwald. What's a Judd Nelson? 
It's okay, just guy. Tell me. It's the Breakfast Club. Oh, duh. Oh. So I definitely love this because just like, you know, the movie that Sonia just mentioned, you get to see all these different types of people. Mm. And so it kind of, you know, gives you the story where you don't know what everybody's going through. Yeah. You don't know what this person's oh, background yeah. is. No matter how much you think you know them, just because of you being in high school with them and you hear whatever you hear, right? Yeah. There's different people that were placed in this room. But this is what the movie is about. They're placed in this room and they start talking to each other and finding out that they're more alike than they have event you know actually thought mm -hmm. we have a goth girl yeah. we have molly ringwald which is but the was she prissy. a goth girl she was depressed slash she was goth because she was a cutter too but, but goth wasn't invented back then <laughs> was it it's, uh, yeah, uh, it the was cure. like weird. the cure was back goth then in the 80s it was more like emo punk kind of yeah, yeah she was I guess like emo punk wait before we go on i really did not like the transformation i was like thumbs down the, the transformation, transformation of what of uh that character from being not punk, from the, being punk depressed. to not punk. I didn't like it either. I give it a thumbs Just, down. I don't to be honest, she because like, she only does it for the guy. Like it, they kind of make it seem like she's only doing it. And she still to had dandruff at the end of the day. <laughs> no, because I think she was. I think she was very pretty before that, and I didn't like how. she Yeah, and they made her. They made it look like she got prettier for the guy. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't like that either. But overall, it's a feel good movie because, um, first of all, they're all going through something that. Um, you know, connects them, yeah. which they're all in punishment, and they're all at this Saturday school detention, right? Yeah. Saturday detention. It's a Saturday detention that they're in, and it's this big library that they're sitting in, right? And they're all from different cliques. Molly is one of the, like, nice, prissy, like, it girls, you know. Is she mean? Yes. Uh, yeah. She's kind of mean, but it's more like her being blunt, and she don't give a fuck, I she think. Mean. And then it's the emo, depressed girl... And then there's the jock, which is Emilio Estevez. The criminal. And then the criminal that's yeah. also like kind of punkish. With the eerie. Like rebellious. Like you can tell like just by looking at him. It's uh, Judd Nelson's character and he's very rebellious. He has one earring, like she said, and some combat boots and a long trench coat, black trench coat, long hair, whatever. Like no, he looks look, like a rocker, right? No, look at him like he's a criminal and he's just like. Yeah, like what? And then there's the nerd. And then there's the nerd. Who is like, I got a bead, what shop? I must kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what happened, right? But he's like the nerd goofy, you know, one. And so he brings laughter and stuff among the group and stuff like that. And so yeah, I feel like him and Molly Ringwald were in a lot of movies together. They were. They were in um, 16 Candles. Yeah, yeah, he was. Um, were they in Pretty in Pink? I don't know. I did, Pink I did not watch Pretty in Pink. Oh, I think he was. But he did watch 16 either. Candles. But anyways, so I like that they start getting to talk to each other, you know, from one reason or another, and, um, you know, they come together, and they make it through this dreaded Saturday detention, you know, mm -hmm. they play pranks on the principal, or the guy that's there, is it the principal? I think so. I that think guy stinks, though. Yeah, he was the most childish out of everyone. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because she was like, like I respect me, nerd. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of what he did, was like. He was disgusting. So yeah, we do see everybody's character like transition whenever they connect with one another. Like they pair them off, kind of. You know, mm -hmm. it's the goth, uh, or not goth, sorry, emo depressed girl with the jock. You know, you would never see them together, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then it was the it girl with the criminal, right? And she transformed. You know, they transform each other. Which is it's funny because during like the eighties or like when those movies were coming out, it wasn't common for like people to do that and like now i would say like in today's time it's that's the normal yeah for people to date somebody that's not like them like, yes i like that because as a society we have gotten better yeah but now we don't think it's cool because everybody's doing it but now we don't want <laughs> no, we like, don't want to be basic yeah no. well no it's all about really it's, it's it should all be about about what makes you happy yeah not anybody else, mm -hmm. basically. So, yeah, that's my feel-good movie. All right, I think we have time for one more. This will be the last one. Uh, can I have some honorable mentions? Yes. Okay, uh, honorable mentions. Well, first, I want to say that my top TV shows are just two, The Office and Friends. Those are okay. All. Honorable mentions are Forrest Gump, The Help, Legally Blonde, The Pursuit of Happiness, Up, School of Rock, Nacho Libre, and Matilda. Get that corn out of my face! Get that corn out of my face! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my next one is... Okay, we're going to go 
into our time machine. No! And we're gonna go let's back. Let's go into a better in time. time. If we have a time machine, let's fix shit. To 1997. Let's go kill that wouldn't work. <laughs> because one, you would kill the baby, and two, this would have happened anyway. <laughs> so we're gonna go back I'm like, time. Not a sad to 1997. Okay. To 1997, Boston. Mm. Oh, this, I think I know. Goodwill Hunting. To this film, it's a two-time Oscar-winning yeah, film for Best Supporting Actor and Best Writing, and seven Oscar nominations for Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actress, Best Director, Best Editing, Best Music, and Best Original Song. And it is Gus Van Sant's 1997 hit, Goodwill Will Hunting. I mean, hunting. fucking hunting. <laughs> Matt Damon. I think Damon. the cool thing about that movie was just that Matt Damon and Ben Affleck wrote that like a long time ago. Like that's to me, that's awesome. Right? Yeah, like because it makes you think that like I mean even me like as a songwriter, Box of Secret like I wrote that ten years ago. So it's kind of like to say mm -hmm. everything you write. In a full circle. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know, it's about uh, one William Hunting. Played by one Matthew Matt Damon. Damon. Yes. A uh, janitor at MIT who has a gift for mathematics but needs help from a psychiatrist played by the late great Robin Williams mm -hmm. to find oh, direction in his life. So, the big. Oh, that's another started. one I wanted to mention. Mm -hmm. Patch Mrs. Doubtfire. Patch Adams. She's like, Mrs. Doubtfire. Those are both one. good ones. The, the, whole time, the whole time. The whole time. The whole time. Okay, okay, sorry. sorry. That's so, just that uh, this the main thing about this film is the whole idea that if you have a gift in something, you are obligated to use it. Do you agree with that? No, mm. no. That's what the movie. You're not up. No. And kind of, it's kind of because in the film, Will uh, Hunting has this great gift of like great knowledge, even though he has no past education, but he has great knowledge. Um, and the MIT professor, who's played by Stellan Skarsgård, was like, you need to come in and you're going to help us and you're going to do this and you're going to do that and you're going to make do these jobs and everything. But Robin Williams' character, uh, McGuire, was like, I don't, what if, uh, what if he doesn't want that, though? Yeah. And then he's like, no, he has to want it because he has this knowledge and he has to use it or else he's just going to live his life away. So like then, I said, it's whatever makes you... Yeah. Happy. And no, but you're this, saying that the movie. What were you saying? What was your original thing? About that, if you have a that talent, you have to use it. it. Oh gosh, I'll fix that later a bit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and there was this other scene in the, uh, uh, in the in the working area, like in the construction construction zone, where him and his best friend, played by Ben Affleck, mm -hmm. were talking to each other, and then. Uh, so he has a best friend, even though he's a janitor. Yeah. Okay. You never what? seen the movie? Just have friends. You never seen the movie? <laughs> I've seen some. Of oh. it. I just don't. But it's remember. not like it's not like like you think of janitor in your mind like like, like if I think old he's old bogey yeah. type of guy. No, like Matt Damon. Like this was just his job because. He just didn't have any direction in life, and he oh, knew he okay. needed a job, and he was just like, whatever kind of job there That's is. That's sad. And him and Ben Affleck like, just hung around Boston, causing trouble. It was doing him, ben shit. What did Ben Affleck do? He worked somewhere, too. I don't know where. He was in a construction, construction zone. Yeah. He was like, after he got fired from the janitor job, he went to work for the construction zone. Yeah. So, um, Casey Affleck is also in this film, too. Oh, okay. Um, he, he was one of the posse. But, but I think maybe the reason why Matt Damon wanted to work in that school is because he just wanted to be in the school. That's another thing. Like, people also, it's kind of like hinting that maybe you do want this subconsciously. That subconsciously. That you want to be in this university. Yeah. And his um, lover was M M Minnie Driver, right? Yeah, who was in Harvard. Mm -hmm. um, but in, uh, in the construction zone scene, Ben Affleck tells uh, Hunting uh, that, like, dude, if you don't, if you don't pursue this whole thing, I'm gonna hate you forever because I would have, I would give anything to have what you have. Mm -hmm. How and, dare you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so, do you guys agree with that sentiment? If you have knowledge, are you obligated to use it? I think in in his situation, it's a little different. Like, if I was a Matt Damon type of person, or Will, if I was a Will type person, and my whole life I was already doing school, doing all these things, da da da, da but then by the time it, I got up to completing my degree or whatever I decided well that's not what I really what I want to do I think that's different now because Matt Damon had this life where he didn't do any of that mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it was just sitting there in his lap mm -hmm. 
And Ben Affleck knows what his life is because it's the same like his. He's like, okay, that's dumb if you don't yeah. take this opportunity. That's the difference. You a real idiot. Because I know a lot of people, <laughs> yeah, like I know a lot of people that do everything like they are supposed to do. You know, they're pretty much like brought into this life, already a whole plan set out for them. And they decide, well, actually, that's never what I wanted to do. And I would never tell them, well, this is what you need to do because that's what I would want to do. Yeah. Keep on, keep on going. So, so I just... I think in his situation, he definitely needed to do it because he would have definitely had regret mm -hmm. if he didn't do it. Because right. he didn't know, he already knew what his life was like before that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too long ago his life was the janitor. The janitor. So, <laughs> another thing that he would constantly say was that, what if I like this life? What if I like this life? This, but, like, in the know. movie, if you watch it, the way that he is with Minnie Driver, like, he... He wanted to make himself think that he liked that life because he did not want the responsibility to be this great thing. Right. So, uh, I mean, another thing about this film is that if you watch the psychology scenes, it's really, really interesting because it's, it's a good look into people's psychology because it also shows uh, this whole battle between... Robert Williams' character and Matt Damon's character. Yeah. So, uh, another thing about it is the whole idea of defense mechanisms. Because what he would do to justify why he didn't want to do do these things was because you know he was he was over rationalizing things. So my question is to you guys: Do you think defense mechanisms is okay? Or, and do you guys do that personally? Yeah, or, I definitely have defense mechanisms. <laughs> as a, yes. I, I had defense mechanism as a reason why I didn't do music for a long time. Really? Yeah, like I think people use defense mechanisms uh, as a way to protect themselves from failing at something. Right. Oh, so that's so, <laughs> so you were, so you were uh, uh, Goodwill hunting yourself. No, I absolutely not. <laughs> like, if I was a genius, like, and you know what I think is so funny about this movie is in a lot of comedies, oh, I wish I knew what it was. What? I think it's Will Ferrell. In one of his movies, he's basically saying... Oh, I love Will Ferrell. He's basically saying what he does, da, 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 and then somebody goes, did you just describe Good Will Hunting? Because he says, oh, like... Oh, yeah. He's like, I, he goes, I work at a... I, he goes, I'm a janitor, and I work at so-and-so. Was it him? Some, I know that I've, I've heard that before. I just Crack can't figure out what movie. Yeah, but no, I'm not anything like a Goodwill Hunting because I'm not like a, a genius. Like basically, he just looked at that problem and it just came to him. It just came to him. No, I'm not like that at all. Yeah, <laughs> You're like, other, I fucking wish. There's this other notion <laughs> in the film where, uh, where knowledge is, is, is shown like when the whole park scene happened between Maguire and Hunting where he told he tells uh, after the first meeting uh, Hunting basically just flexed his knowledge to try to scare him off but then he realized oh Maguire is not like the other psychologists mm. and everything but what did he say that like he tried to outsmart him about his no, session well, well, well it was like he saw the uh, a painting in the room and he was like Wow, this is a good painting. Oh, I, art stuff. Uh, <laughs> so he knew everything about everything. Kind of, yeah. And then I thought it was just mathematics. Well, mathematics and a bunch of other stuff. I think he's one of those people that he can read something and then just remember it. Yeah. Oh, so, there was a timer. Yeah. So, yeah, so awesome. then, he, then he turns to Robin Williams' his character to McGuire, and he was like, and then McGuire was like, uh, well, my wife picked it out and all that stuff. It's like, oh, really? Where is she now? She must have been doing it with other guys. <laughs> and then he was like, how dare you? And just, just oh, yeah, they do. Chunks him and all that. Yeah, like he's kind of self-destructive. Yeah. Um, he he kind of like, and they do that. They well, because he's having problems, right? They, yeah. they, make, they make you aware that he's going through shit. Yeah, they do that to characters in movies. They make them self-destructive. Man, I can't wait to like get a movie role where I get to go crazy. What? I'm gonna go so crazy. So, uh, and also, <laughs> so easy for me. So after that scene, they were in a park together, and then McGuire tells him, tells him, you know, you you probably 
uh, you can uh, uh, you probably know everything there is to know about art or whatever, but you've never seen the Mona Lisa or the Sistine Chapel. You don't know how it smells and how it feels and all that kind of stuff. Basically, trying to make him feel bad that he didn't that he lived the life of shit, right? Um, yeah, kind I think of. what he was trying to say he's is he's pooping on him. I yeah. think what he's trying to say is that core knowledge without experience oh, isn't okay. that Okay, that sounds valuable. better than what I said. <laughs> so, yeah, you're gonna get up by Nate. <laughs> so, what do you guys think about that? About what? what? About is, is knowledge not enough? Is experience plus knowledge? Yeah, I mean that's better. That's experience ideal. Experience is better. Because yeah. for instance, take take me for instance. Everybody, when I have to tell people that I'm Mexican, they're just like, okay, what well, did you were you did you grow up in Mexico? I'm like, no, I'm from here, so I'm mesquite Mexican. <laughs> Anyways, but you know, like when I when I go and talk with my friends that go to Mexico a lot, mm-hmm. there I could read all day about Mexico and like the culture and my culture and blah 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 blah. But their summers in Mexico are way better than what I read in the book. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, my, the end. My family stayed in Texas back when it was in Mexico. Oh, cool. We never left. That's, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yes. So, <laughs> so, yeah, my family lived in Mexico, the Republic of Texas, and America without moving. Wow. There's a lot of family go there. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool, though. So, yeah, that. that is a little good. So, good will hunting. Final thoughts. What do you guys think? I mean, I remember watching it, and uh, I don't really like. Rem- I mean, I like. I don't remember too much of it. But I just remember the the saying. Uh, How about them apples? Yeah, and that saying came out on that other movie, uh, Jay and Silent Bob, isn't it? He's like, "How about them apples?" Yeah. And I never apples got why it was bitch. such a big deal. Like, "How about them apples?" Uh, it's just, just a coined phrase, I guess, yeah. that they yeah, wanted to use. So. Yes. Okay. Well, we have. Ran out of time, unfortunately. Yeah, so I'm going to just say what... Your honorable is. mentions? Yeah. Okay. The other ones I had on here was Big by Penny Marshall, It's a Wonderful Life by Franklin Capra, Little Miss Sunshine by Valerie Ferris and Jonathan Dayton, uh, Pride and Prejudice by Joe Wright, mm-hmm. As Good As It Gets by James L. Brooks, and Bridget Jones's Diary by <laughs> Sharon McGuire. <laughs> Speaking of which, did you know that today is Holocaust Remembrance Day? Oh. It's so sad. That is sad. Yeah. That's sad. And that concludes <laughs> our episode. Thank you, Sonia. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. So before we go, is there anything you want to plug? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Follow me on Instagram at Sonia, S-O-N-I-A underscore Kilo, K-I-L-O. That's my real last name. And yeah, on there you'll find everything about me. www.soniakilomusic.com. Yes. Do you accept DMs? <laughs> I do, <laughs> but uh, I'm telling you guys, these DMs are getting a little crazy. They're sending me bank account like screenshots, like like that's they, supposed to impress yeah, you. Yeah. They also call me now. Like you guys are getting a little bit too brave. Oh my god! Uh, what? Nice. So before we go, we're gonna wrap things up real quick. Um, can you tell us like the most wildest story that you've encountered with your fans? Yeah, okay, so, so This actually just happened today. So this guy kept saying hello. 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 Hello And I don't like to block people. I think it's rude So I try not to read it because I'm like he knows I'm looking well I accidentally pressed on it <laughs> Then he called I me. hate that. So I'm looking at it because I don't want to decline it and I'll know So I had to answer it and he was just like, oh my god I can't believe you answered and I was like I really would appreciate it if you don't call like that. And he just said, okay. <laughs> he woke up. Aww. But they get a little crazy. They're starting to get a little bit more crazy. And I'm, at, I'm on the verge of like, are you a fan or are you just like... Creepy stalker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Murderous stalker. Right. I will find you and I will... No. <laughs> yes. Nobody messes with my new friend, Sonia. Yeah. Or yes. else you're going to get a whooping. A Liam Neeson type. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Bye, Thank you, guys.